is the Citroen EC3. Now, this is the French car maker's first electric hatchback here in India, priced between 11.5 and 12.43 lakh ex showroom. This is the Tata Tiago EV, India's most affordable electric hatchback, prices starting at 8.69 lakh ex showroom. But here's the interesting part. The car we have here in its top spec, guys, which is just a few thousands lesser than the larger Citroen EC3, which also happens to get a larger battery pack. So, is there even a contest? Well, we've lived with these cars for a few days, we've tested them, and the results are closer than you think. The Citroen EC3 looks funky, it looks stylish, and with all the butch SUV-esque elements, it definitely stands out and gives a premium first impression. The EC3 looks identical to the petrol C3. However, EV-specific badges and a charging flap on the front right fender are the only visual cues that give away its green credentials. Now, mind you, the alloys you see here aren't part of the package. The Tiago EV, on the other hand, is the classic textbook definition of what a hatchback should be. Now, this nameplate has been around since 2016, but with facelifts and some touches of modernity, the Tiago EV still manages to look like a handsome hatchback. The Tiago EV is better distinguished from its petrol counterpart thanks to a closed-off front grille and air damp panels, as well as light blue highlights. However, in this comparison, the little Tata comes across a full size smaller and even the numbers suggest the same. To enter the EC3, you need to pull a flap-type door handle, which looks a bit old-school. But from there on, impressions are pretty good. The interior design is modern, storage areas are plenty, and even the front seats are pretty comfortable. The large 10.2-inch touchscreen is superb, it has wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, and even sound quality from its speakers is surprisingly good. Citroen has intentionally skimped on features and while some of these like the twist key starter or manual air conditioner or the absence of a reverse camera and rear wiper might not bother many, the manual mirrors are quite a pain to adjust, especially the one on the left side. Floor height is raised due to the battery placed beneath the floor, so you're seated in a knees up position at the rear. However, space is very good and even a third passenger won't feel unwelcome. The boot is larger too, and the EC3 also packs in a spare tyre beneath its floor. The Tiago EV has a well-appointed interior, and what lifts the cabin's appeal is the off-white colour theme and the leatherette seats. However, the design has begun to show its age now, and the small 8-inch touchscreen isn't as nice as the Citroen's. But what blows your mind is the fantastic 8-speaker sound system. Its seats are nice, but the Citroen's are comfier and more supportive. And because the Tiago's battery is placed partially in place of the petrol's fuel tank and partially beneath the boot in a split format, floor height remains similar to the petrol Tiago. Now, space at the rear isn't as much as the Citroen, nor is boot space. And with the Tiago EV, you don't get a spare tyre. What you get instead is a tyre inflator. And before we get to the drive impressions, here's a comparison of their equipment list. First impressions while driving the Citroen EC3, you're seated in a very SUV-like raised driving position. My seat is actually in its lowest position and I still have a clear view of the road ahead. I can see the bonnet and it's very easy to judge the edges of this car. The steering is nice and light and with a turning radius of less than 5 meters, it makes parking and maneuvering this car a breeze. But then when you look down at the instrument cluster, this monochromatic instrument cluster looks like the Nokia 1100 display from the early 2000s. Definitely not something that you'd expect in a car that cost rupees 13 lakhs. And if you want to see the battery percentage, you'll have to push this button here and then you won't know how much range do you have. 
Now, besides the SUV like raised driving position, what you also get with this car is a higher ground clearance. What's also nice is that like other Citroens, it rounds off those sharp edges like a champ. The last time we had experienced this car was on a test track in controlled environments and honestly our first impressions of its performance was a bit lukewarm. Out here in the real world, it feels just about adequate. Now if you've not driven an electric car before, the Citroen EC3 might just seem like a perfectly fine, smooth, automatic car. But if you have and you've experienced those immediate electrifying responses that an electric car has to offer, then sadly, those will be missing from the EC3's drive experience. But quite honestly, it's more than adequate to keep up with the flow of traffic and that's exactly what the EC3 owners are going to do. Driving this car for short runs, for errands, in traffic. Now, unlike the Tiago, there's no sport mode, but this car gets an eco mode. Now, when you press the eco mode button, it is supposed to dull down the throttle response, but quite honestly, I couldn't tell the difference. And there's no adjustable regeneration in this car. It's quite natural. It feels like you're just slowing down in a regular petrol car. Now, here's the thing. This car is not as refined as the Tata Tiago EV. Now, you can feel some vibrations, particularly at low speeds or when you are at a standstill. And those are coming from the motor, which you can feel on the seats. The Citroen EC3 uses a 29.2 kWh battery, which is larger than the Tiago's 24 kWh. What's unique is that the Tiago's is liquid-cooled, whereas the Citroen EC3 is air-cooled. Now, what does that mean for you as a user? Uh, in simple terms, the Citroen's battery might not be able to fast charge as quickly as the Tata Tiago in the real world, up to 100%. But apart from that, there is absolutely nothing to worry about. In fact, Citroen is also offering you a seven-year warranty on the battery pack. Time to check out the Tata Tiago EV. The Tiago EV makes 114 newton meters of max torque. But what's interesting is that it makes its max torque in sport mode where when you put your foot down, it just scoots forward with a real sense of urgency. In fact, it is the stronger gush of torque which makes the Tiago feel livelier and nicer to drive. But in the regular drive mode, it makes only about 75% of that torque. Despite that, it is the Tiago which feels like the more responsive car of the two and that's also due to the fact that it is 166 kilos lighter than the Citroen EC3. The Tiago EV's motor is far more seamless and more refined compared to the Citroen EC3 and the vibrations that I was talking about in the EC3 None of them are present in this car. We tested the cars back to back and up to 50 km per hour, their performance seems quite similar. But the Tiago EV feels much stronger from there on and accelerates to 100 km per hour nearly 3 seconds quicker. It is also the Tiago EV which has a higher top speed of 120 km per hour. The Tiago EV gets four levels of regenerative braking. Level zero, where it's off completely, so it lets the car roll freely when you lift your leg off the accelerator. Then there's level one, two, and three, with three being the most intense and one being the least. Even the Tiago drives beautifully well and it takes on 
all the speed breakers and the bad roads quite well. But compared to the EC3, the suspension feels a touch firmer. Finally, we address the most crucial aspect of this comparison, the range test. We drove both these cars back to back under similar conditions and both of them achieved similar battery efficiency of nearly 7.8 km per kilowatt hour. So theoretically, with its larger battery, the Citroen EC3's range is likely to be around 228 km, while the Tiago EV's is around 187 on a full charge. We also charge these cars simultaneously on a 30 kW DC fast charger. And here are the stats. It is clear then, while both cars consume similar energy to charge to 100%, it was the Tiago EV with its liquid cooled battery which was a bit quicker to charge on a DC fast charger. So that's the Citroen EC3 for you. It is the bigger car in this comparison, not just in terms of cabin space and boot space, but also in terms of the way it drives and also because of its larger battery, it gets you a longer travel range. Even though Citroen's service network is limited, that might not be a deal breaker because few things go wrong with EVs to begin with. So visits to the service station are likely to be few and far between. However, what will dampen the ownership experience, especially for techie EV buyers, is the EC3's barren feature list, which might make you question the premium it commands over the generously equipped Tata Tiago EV. Finally, the Citroen lacks the strong instantaneous responses synonymous with modern EVs and performance is dull in comparison to the Tata Tiago EV. And that's where the Tiago EV noses ahead in this contest. Its motor offers livelier performance, making it nicer to drive and in its top spec, it packs in loads of kit. And in areas like comfort and battery range where it falls behind the EC3, the Tata is still pretty good. Moreover, what makes it more accessible to a larger set of buyers are its multiple variants with a sub 10 lakh rupees starting price and its relatively wider sales network. On the whole, while the EC3 is genuinely a likeable car, it is the Tata Tiago EV which checks more boxes as an all-rounder.